This is your city. This is your city wants to know. We want to know the background, the heartbeat of what makes up our beautiful cities. We dig into the backstories from the struggles to the successes of our local entrepreneurs, small business owners, artists, not for profit organizations, and the many, many people who make up the intricate tapestry of our communities. Real people, real stories, by you and for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of This Is Your City. I am Kim, your host. Today, we are speaking about something very dear to my heart. As most of you know, I am a person that suffers with ulcerative colitis, which is an immune disease. It's a, it's a inflammatory bowel disease. Some of you know it as IBD. Well, my guest today is a young man. His name is Jordan, and Jordan also suffers with IBD. However, he has Crohn's disease. Basically, the difference is just the small intestine and the large intestine from Crohn's and colitis. However, more people who suffer from Crohn's disease have, it, it, I think it's just, it affects them worse. It's, it's more chronic. Although ulcerative colitis is very chronic, Crohn's disease tends to be more problematic um, and I don't mean this in a bad way, Jordan, because don't, it's not scaring you in a way, but Crohn's disease does have more fatalities um, than colitis. So just so our, our listeners kind of know what's going on. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to Jordan today is because I heard a bit of a story about how it has affected him from a young child up into his teens. Um, and it also some really good, some cool stuff coming out of this, like with this, because obviously with an IBD, food is one of our major enemies and I love food. And so with that, you know, we have to watch all the time. One day, one thing's good. The next day it's not good. But Jordan has when um, helped pen and author a cookbook, which I'm really excited to talk about. We'll get that into that in a minute, but I, I just love the fact that he helped author a cookbook and he's so young. So we'll get into that Tim, in a moment, but Jordan, I want to welcome you to This Is Your City. Thank you for being a guest. Thank you for taking time out of your day today. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I know I mentioned this before I pushed record, but happy Hanukkah. I know today is the first day of Hanukkah for you and your family. So happy Hanukkah. And before I got on, I actually went and looked at how to say it. And now I forget. So I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's not good. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm about it. Awesome. So you're 15. Yeah, I'm 15 years old. 15, and you have Crohn's disease. Crohn's, yeah. So tell our guests, how did you, how old were you when your parents found out that you had this? Um, I was about seven years old, I think. It started earlier, but I wasn't diagnosed until I was seven because I, I went through a lot of testing, but they didn't see it on any of the tests. So it took a long time to actually diagnose it. Right. It does take a long time because they have to go through so much to, to figure out what it is. Cause it could be this, it could be that. And it does take a long time to diagnose it, but seven years old is really young. I know you had it before that. Um, I don't know. I'm sure you do know, I'm sure your parents and yourself have done a lot of research on this, but only in the recent, maybe 10 years, maybe, well, 15, I guess, cause you're 15, but the younger generation, the younger aged kids are being di diagnosed with this in, in astronomical numbers in this country. It, yeah. It's insane. It's insane. So what were some of the symptoms when you were seven years old, when you were finally diagnosed, what was happening in your body? So prior to being diagnosed, I noticed I was not able to eat food. I was having constant stomach pains and I, I was just aching. My whole body was sore. I was getting random headaches and like, I, I just couldn't function the same way I used to. And then after being diagnosed, it still was the same, except over time, it uh, worsened and developed into like more severe abdominal pain. And then later down the line, I ran into other complications, which weren't too fun to deal with. No, they're not. And how many surgeries have you had up to date? Um, I had my tonsils. I had my fistula. And I did have one more, I believe. I just don't remember the name of it. Right. Any, any operations or surgeries due to the Crohn's? Um, yes. My tonsils were due to my Crohn's. Oh. And then I had 
urinary fistula disease, which was from Crohn's. So I'd have that. And then, yeah, I think that's it for those two. I think it's two for those. But still, I mean, that's, that's for such a young age, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. I had my tonsils removed when I was 11, I think. And the, the tonsils was because of the Crohn's? Yeah, it was because I kept getting strep throat because I had no immunity. Right. Right. Okay. So yeah, the, that makes sense. So the reoccurrence of my strep throat, I, I, my whole throat was infected, so I had to remove it because it just kept getting reinfected. Wow. That's terrible. And I, I, I saw a video with kind of like your story, your line, your timeline and stuff and how kids used to say how lucky you were because you used to have to stay home. And, you know, I'm sure you were like, yeah, right. I'd probably want to be in school. Oh yeah, no, when I was in school, everyone was like, oh, you're always missing school. You must be at home, like do like playing games, everything. I'm like, no, I'm just in my bed, but they didn't believe me. Yeah, because you can't, you can't do much when you have those abdominal cramps and pains. I don't even want to say cramps because to me that minimizes it too much. It's a pain that you can't explain, you know? Yeah, I was, I was always known as the kid who just like, oh, I used to sit at home and just do whatever he wants. He used to skip school, but it wasn't always that I was in my bed. Just, not even able to eat stuff because that's just like your worst enemy. I was just drinking water, having like the liquids. It was not fun. No, not fun at all. And I saw in that video too, like, because some of your time home, you, you know, you couldn't do much. You started a hobby mm -hmm. of cooking. Yeah. And how old were you when you started cooking? I actually don't know how old I was. I think my mom started when I was really young because she loves cooking and baking. So I just kind of picked it up from her. And so you, you obviously got the passion for it. I love, I love it. It's my favorite thing to do in my free time. What do you think you're going to do? Are you going to go on to culinary school or is that? No, that's not. I envision myself as a plastic surgeon, hopefully, hopefully, but yeah, I, well, yeah. but as a side, I, I do like cooking and baking as a hobby. A plastic. Well, you know what? Both of those are a science, right? Plastic surgeon and, and baking. That's, that's a science. Cooking is a science. That's awesome. Not hopefully you will do it. If you really want to, you're going to do it. Yeah. You know, I just want for my listeners, I want to give a few facts about Crohn's disease and, and irritable bowel disease. And one thing that blows my mind is that Canada, and I'm sure you probably might know this also, Canada has the highest rate of IBD in the world. Now that's, I mean, we don't have a lot of people in this country. What, 37 million people in the whole country? Canada has the highest rate of IBD in the entire country. And right now in 2021, for some reason, it's the highest with seniors. 10 years ago, it started becoming the highest with younger boys, younger kids, but mostly boys. And right now it's seniors. And what what I found really interesting, because Jordan, you and I both live in Ontario, Canada. Um, I found really interesting that Ontario has the highest amount of IBD patients with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, which is, it just blows my mind. And I'm just trying to figure out why. Have you ever done any research to say why? Why do we have this? Um, when I was doing, when I was really curious about this, I found that it's usually passed on from other family members who had the condition pre-existing. So I believe my um, dad's father had it and then it skipped a generation. So he doesn't have it. And then I got it. Yeah, it is hereditary for sure. Yeah. Mine too is, comes from family lines. But when I was reading up on this and science, you know, I mean, science every, every day is they're coming up with new stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I was listening or reading up on some um, health line, it's healthline.com. They were talking about why, why is Canada one of the highest in the world. And it kind of shocked me. So I'm thinking, does Canada consume more sugar than the United States? I mean, the United States is known as one of the most obese countries. So why Canada? Some of the scientists are saying that it is sucralose. It is our intake of sucralose. We have about 65 to 95% of sucralose that is extracted through our gut system and Canadians apparently ingest tons of sucralose sugar it's a form of sweetener it's in all of our food it's in all of our you know dairy ice creams pops whatever it is 
So that's telling me that Canadians aren't really eating as healthy as we should be eating. And how, how are you with sugar? Does that affect you? Cause I know it affects me. It definitely, I, if it dairy, I love dairy. So if it's in dairy, it affects me a lot, but I, I usually stay away from my junk foods, like chips, candies, chocolates, but yeah, dairy is my main thing. How do you stay away from candy and chocolate? I never really liked candy that much, to be honest. Like I liked it as a kid, but as I grew up, I kind of guess the moved away from it yeah well dairy you know i'm what is it um almond milk you can you can switch there's lots of things for us nowadays cashew mm-hmm. milk dairy milk or almond milk coconut milk those kinds of things do you use those i uh, my family actually buys lactose free milk because I, i'm lactose intolerant as well and so is my dad yeah so i think it has, also has lower sugar it does yeah well crohn's yeah crohn's disease typically it's a lactose intolerant mm-hmm. My biggest nemesis is cheese. That's my, oh my gosh. I think I would starve if there was no cheese. I love cheese. It's like my favorite thing. Yeah. So then now, so seven, seven years old, you were diagnosed many years. Cause I mean, 15, you're still young, but when you're suffering and you're in pain constantly, that it seems like time just drags on, Mm -hmm. right? Staying home. Your friends are saying, oh, you're so lucky you get to stay home. But really you're in bed curled up in a ball because your body is just your enemy at the moment. People don't understand that your body becomes your enemy, right? And then your mom started teaching you how to cook when you were staying home. Yeah. So you're, I'm going to get into the cookbook, but what I want to know is when you were learning how to cook and your mom was teaching you, I mean, obviously she's teaching you your, your, your different, probably some Jewish recipes, like handed down family recipes, but were you also doing things for Crohn's? Um, when we, when I was started, when I started to cook with my mother and bake, we we were trying to, originally we decided to find foods that I can actually digest and not have issues because some foods gave me harsher times. So we're mainly looking for something I can eat and enjoy. And then when you found those, you, you just kept, I just kept mastering those. I just kept looking and looking and then just developed a passion to cook and be. And do you find sometimes if you can say you'll cook something one week, you'll be able to eat it. And the next week you can't have, you, did you have that struggle? Uh, certain foods. Yeah. Because some foods are more dairy heavy. So it yeah. depends what was in the food. It's how sensitive my um, stomach was. Yeah, definitely. And then you started baking these and you started writing down the recipes. Whose idea was it to do the cookbook? My mom's. Your mom's idea? And so you helped her, obviously. Yeah. And I love, off, pardon? Go ahead, sorry. No, no, go ahead, sorry. It started off as just like my mom, like, oh yeah, we should make a cookbook as a joke. And it kind of just like took off from there and kind of just all helped chip in. I love that as a family thing. I love that idea. And one thing I really love is the title of your cookbook. Tell everybody the title of your cookbook. It's, um, you've got to make this. You've got to make this. And most people might have, well, if in Canada anyway, have seen the show or heard about it, you've got to eat here. Mm-hmm. Have, well, have you seen it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you've got to eat here and then you've got, you've got to make this. I love that. And I was thinking today when I, because when I edit this video and I post it up, you know, I do a lot of tags. I'm going to tag the show and I'm going to tag the host and everything. So hopefully, you know, they'll see something and then, Who knows, right? Who knows where things can go? They can say, oh, you've got to eat this. You've got to make this. And maybe they'll contact you. Maybe the correlation will help. That's right. Wouldn't that be exciting? That would be. (laughs) So tell some of us, tell us some of the recipes that you found for Crohn's that you've, you know, let's start with like, just like your main courses. What is something that Jordan Berg can eat that's in these, this cookbook? So what I found that was like, thing that I used most commonly went to when I was sick or I was having issues, even though it's dairy, macaroni. You can eat it? Uh, yeah, I can. It's just sometimes I, I usually use a uh, lactose pills. So it helps with it. So it's the easiest thing to eat for me. And it's not harsh on my stomach. So it's just noodles and like cream and cheese and like, simple ingredients. Is it homemade mac and cheese? Yeah, it's homemade. Except, except the noodles. It's, it's yeah. more about noodles, but everything else is. Yeah. Okay. So then there's less, if it's homemade, everything is better when it's homemade because you got less of those chemicals that they put in our food. What about the pasta? Do you have to eat 
um, glucose or glucose. Um, what is it called? Oh my gosh. I just lost. Pardon? Gluten-free. Gluten-free. <laughs> no, I don't. I was going to try a gluten-free diet. Never felt, felt through because everything I eat has gluten in it and I can't back away from it. I know it's hard. It's hard. And it's expensive if you want to go out and buy gluten-free stuff. Yeah. It's like double the price, double the price. And that's just ugh, drives me nuts. Yeah. So what else? So mac and cheese, which is who doesn't like mac and cheese? Wow, it's great. <laughs> what are some other recipes in there? People are, I'm going to put up the link to it so they can purchase it as well, but just give an idea of what kind of recipes are in there. Um, I usually went more towards the desserts actually. Oh, yum. That's when I used to like sweets. So I used to, I went to the cookies a lot and the cake pops. I used to love the cake pops, like the inside batter. Yep. And then the chocolate coating. And then I went to the cookies because they're like soft. I mean, I don't like, I usually like the soft cookies, not the crunchy ones. And they were perfect. Me too. Yeah. So that it's mostly a baking cookbook. Um, I think it's half baking, half cooking. Half baking, half cooking. And is it just you and your mom? It was actually my whole family. It's a family endeavor. So usually oh, I... my mom's always been the baker. My dad's always been cooking. It's kind of just them too. So I learned how to cook more so for my dad. And then baking was more my mom's thing. Wonderful. Are you an only child? No, I have an older brother. Oh, you have, does he cook as well? Yes, he does. He, yes. Um, he, he used to not cook as much as I did, but this cookbook kind of pushed him into it. And now he likes to cook and bake. So what do your friends think when they know that you've, you're an author of a, of a cookbook? You're... You've helped author a cookbook. Uh, they love it. They always ask me, like, where can I get one? Before it was even released, they were just always coming over and trying the food that we made, waiting for it to come out so they can buy one. And did they? Have they supported you? Yeah, a few of them have. Well, more of them should. <laughs> more of them should. That's the thing. We I always find that, too. The people closest to you, sometimes you got to bug them the most to get go out there and buy these things. Yeah. Are you doing any, any, um, promos for it? Where can they, where can they find you? Where can they find the book? We do have an Instagram. I believe it is under, you've got to make this the same as the cookbook name. And we also, I believe a Facebook account and a website. Is it on Amazon or anything yet? I do not know if it's on Amazon, but if it does go on Amazon, it will be posted on the Instagram. I believe. On your Instagram. Yeah. Cause you got to get people to buy it off of Amazon. And, and leave a comment. Here's the trick to it. When you're an author or you have something, ensure that at least five minimum, minimum five people go on Amazon and make, and leave a comment. Mm -hmm. Amazon's uh, um, algorithms, they catch these things. And if enough people go on and make it, leave a comment, they can dub you as an international bestseller. Mm, good to know. Did you know that? No, I did not. Well, Never really went into Amazon marketing. Yeah. So I just, cause people I've interviewed, I've interviewed a lot of authors who have like, you know, five, six books out there and their first ones were always get on Amazon, get on Amazon and get people to leave comments. They've all said the same thing and the algorithms of Amazon will catch it. So there's a tip for you. Hope that helps. <laughs> Are you, do you do any of the Crohn's walks? I have not. I have, I have never done them because usually around the times when they start, I really get sick like I always have flares yeah I you know I'm ashamed to say I haven't done one yet either every time I'm like yes I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do a 5k because I mean that's all I could do so I could do a five and I haven't yet and I feel so bad you know I support it I support them but I, I haven't done the walk yet but maybe maybe you can do that and some of the proceeds well actually let me back up here some of your proceeds from the cookbook they do go towards the, the, sorry? They do go, they all, some of the proceeds all go, like, they go to the Crohn's and Colitis. Of Canada? Uh, yeah, Canada. That's awesome. That's wonderful. <laughs> Giving back. That's wonderful. So they can find it there. And you yourself, do you have Instagram so they can go and find you as well? I do have Instagram. I do not know that. I haven't used Instagram in a while. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the name. I can, I can pull it up and try to find it. I don't know if I'm logged in still. Well, you can send it to me after the fact. So when I do the editing, I can put it up, All right? If you don't have it right now, you can get it to me. And then when I do the editing, I'll put it up because you have a book to sell now, Jordan, you want to, and hopefully this will help you and maybe want to do another one in the future, but you have a book to sell and you want it to go number one. So 
people have to know where to find you. Slowly. And you're 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 a handsome young man, so you know, get the girls out there liking your your Instagram posts. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's fun. So, um, anything else you need you want people to know, Jordan, about Crohn's, how to handle it, what to do? You got any advice for people who maybe have just found out they've been diagnosed? The best thing you can do is find what works for you. Some small things, like knowing how to help you in your situation, like what to do, how to take care of yourself. Those all go towards feeling better in the end. And the end goal is, to, of course, to go into remission, whether that be medicinal or non-medicinal. You have to go through experimenting in order to get what you need. That's so true. You know, that just reminded me when I, when you were saying that I also would like to tell people it's not all in your head, right? Because for me personally, I don't know about you and other people that I know for a long time, people and doctors included were like, it's all in your head. It's not this, it's not that it's just gas. It's just a stomach, you know, something you ate for a long time. So know your body. We know our body get to know your body and listen to it. It's not all in your head. Keep pushing, find somebody who will listen to you and get you the tests and, and take care and follow. Like Jordan just said, if it's medicinal or not, I know Jordan, you and I both are on Remicade infusions. That was a lifesaver for me. You know, I don't want to be on it for the rest of my life. I'm sure you don't either. Have you always been on this or were you on something else? I have tried a lot of things before it first thing i tried i believe was methotrexate it actually damaged my eardrum and gave me imbalance oh. and that actually gave me vertigo from that oh my gosh yeah yeah, or, yeah there's I, there's treatments some of them work better for others but i find remicade lifesaver because before that i was always at home yeah. I think when i was in school i couldn't even sit on like we used to, have to sit on carpets when we used to like read or do a lesson, I couldn't even, so I used to have to sit on a chair where everyone else was sitting on the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Your body, it's not just your gut. It's your entire body, your joints. Mm -hmm. Like you said, your because your immune system is lower, you know, infections can come more. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a lot of things, your eyes, um, just fatigue. Do you get fatigued? Oh yeah. I, used, I, used, I still get very fatigued from everything. Yeah. It's just insane. It's, it takes over your entire body. So yes, as Jordan said, just find something that works for you. You know, you might have to mix and match. You might have to go from one to another until you find something, but yeah, don't, don't stop looking for, for, for somebody to listen to you, to hear you when, when you know something's not right with your own body. Right. All right. So Jordan, I, I know, um, your time is limited. So I promised your mother that I would try and keep it <laughs> around 30 minutes. So I really do appreciate you telling your story. I, I really enjoy it, Jordan, because I think more young people need to, to speak, to speak up and speak out when things like this are happening. And, and, you know, people need to take our young generation seriously. It's, you know, he's not trying to get out of school. It's not because they don't want to do something. It's not making excuses. And I think our younger generation needs to be heard. I am, I am so pro youth. I, I try whatever I can do to, to boost our youth. So I really do appreciate you telling your story because more youth need to stand up and say, it's okay. I can talk about this. It's not embarrassing. It's not nothing to be ashamed of. And, you know, you could be that catalyst that helps somebody else your age. You know, it takes one person to speak out to help everyone else be vocal about their situation. Thank you. That is awesome. Yes, it is. Thank you. And so I also want everybody to go out and buy this cookbook. You've got to make this. I just love that title. You've got to make this. And those are a lot of recipes in there that Jordan and his family have come up with that he can handle. So Maybe there's something you can handle if you have IBD, if you have something going on. Maybe these are recipes you can handle, or even if you don't have IBD, just go make them. Go get, buy the book, buy the, the cookbook, get your kids together. I love the fact your family does it. 
Get your kids together and do something as a family and make some of these recipes. You've got to make this by the Berg family. Right? Yep. Right. All right, Jordan. Yes. Yeah, so we will have this posted on uh, YouTube, anywhere podcasts are, Facebook, everything like this. So we'll have your information, your the tags and all of your, your where the cookbook is as well. Okay. Great. Thank you. And if you have another book that comes out, let me know so we can have you on and, and promote it for you. For sure. All right. Have a great day. And everybody, please go out and support Crohn's and Colitis if you can. Do the walk, wear the shirt. It's a purple ribbon, by the way. If anybody sees, if you see somebody with a purple ribbon, typically that means Crohn's and Colitis awareness. If you can, support it, donate and help some of these projects going so that we can find a cure. There is no cause and no cure at this time, but I don't believe that that's the way it will stay. There will be a cure. So thank you. Thank you for your time, Jordan. Have a great day. Have a great day with your grandma cooking and baking today. And hopefully we will talk to you soon. And for my listeners, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us again. As I always say, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you tuning in each and every time. So don't forget to subscribe, to like, to download, to share, send a pigeon, whatever it is. Be sure to tell everyone that they should be listening to This Is Your City. Stay safe and stay blessed. Ciao. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah.